Good morning, everyone. Can we stand to our feet today? Come on, welcome to First Apostolic. Are we ready to worship the Lord today? Come on, put your hands like this. Any conquerors in the house today? We want more than conquerors. Come on, through Jesus' name, we're more than conquerors. Hey! Come on, you know this one. Sing along with us. I'm dancing in the valleys, places of defeat. And I'm walking on tribal.
again welcome welcome to first apostolic so good to see everyone so good to see our guests that are in the house first apostolic family put your hands together for our guests that are here we got so many we got some that are here brother asa sister cameron got married this past friday and we got a lot of their family that's here good to have all our floridian family that's here amen amen i know listen we we probably got 200 that are away from the family this is this is also our fall break week but i'm thankful for the couple hundred that are here helping us worship god today thank you for being here with us amen with the with the congregation put your hands together one more time thank you amen got to got to meet a, a brand new family all the way from indiana that just moved into the maryville area good to meet you all let me tell you something if you're here and this is your first time second time third time this is what we say around here. You claim us, we claim you. There's no membership card. You don't have to have a letter of recommendation. If you want to make this your home church, we want it to be your home church. You want us to be your family, we want to be your family. Amen. And listen, we have something, what's called our Welcome Home Series. This is something that happens every Sunday morning directly after service. When the, when the altar service is done this morning, um, right in a room right outside this door here on the other side of the hallway, is our Connect Center. Just go there. If you're wanting to make this your home church, go there. There's people that'll welcome you. They'll tell you exactly how everything works, what to do. And we want to get you involved and get you acclimated into this First Apostolic Church family. Amen. Well, we got about five minutes we're going to put on the clock. Uh, we got a timer that's going to count down. And for five minutes, let's just get out into the aisles. Why don't you greet someone? Make sure your seat is safe. <laughs> Make sure your seat is safe, but get out in the aisles and greet someone, meet someone, make a friend. Come on, First Episode Church, let's welcome all of our guests in the house today.
Come on now, worship with us. Thanks for a choir this morning. He's a healer. He's a restorer. He's a deliverer. Put your hands together like this. He'll turn your pain into praise. He'll turn your sorrow to joy. Yeah. Come on, sister, hug and sing about it.
the only name we need today. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Always turning things around. Woo! Always turning things around. If it wasn't for the Lord, where would I be?
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, let everything that had breath praise you, the Lord, this morning. Let everything that had breath praise you, the Lord, this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. If it wasn't for the Lord, where would I be? My life was nothing until he set me free. What a change, what a change. Come on, praise him with me just a little bit more. Praise him, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Worthy is our God. Worthy is our God. Worthy is our God. Worthy is our God. Can I tell you, church is not the battlefield. Monday through Saturday is the battlefield. But when it comes to Sunday, we who have been fighting the good fight of faith all week long, come into an atmosphere and a sanctuary where no vulture's eye has seen. We come into a sanctuary of protection. And here in the altar, here in the altar, we'll walk a man back and forth whose wife has had a large cancerous tumor removed from her body. And as far as man would say, her life hangs in the balances. But a Steve Mitchie will come on a Sunday morning. Find his way in the altar. And just give God praise. There are those here with all kinds of situations, circumstances in their lives. But oh, aren't you glad for a Sunday morning church service. Where the master comes down and gives us unbelievable strength. I praise him today. There is no better time to go before the Lord in prayer than this atmosphere. If you have a need today, would you simply just slip your hand up in the air all over this building. Those of you that are watching and worshiping with us online, our online congregation, if you just stretch your hands out toward the screen today, we'll connect around the world. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I come boldly into your presence because of the blood covenant of Calvary. Lord, I come boldly, God, into your presence today. Lord, I ask you to touch Sister Mitchie. I ask you, oh God, again and again, Lord, to remove and to heal and to touch. Lord, Sister Mitchie today. Lord, I ask you to touch Bonnie Winchester. And I ask you, Lord, God, to touch Kathy Belcher today and Sister Step today. And Sister Lois Orr today, God. I, Lord, these, Lord, that are, God, that are truly shut in, that are unable to come, Barbara and Nola Havard. I pray for Barbara and Nola Havard today that, God, that you would reach out. And, Lord, that you would touch, Lord, the needs in this congregation this morning. Lord God, you've seen every hand that's been lifted today. You've seen every need, Lord. You hear every prayer, God, that is prayed. Lord, in the name of Jesus, right now, Lord, God, let there be healing take place across this sanctuary. Let there be deliverance take place across this sanctuary. Oh, Holy Spirit of heaven, move up and down the aisles of this church. God, move upon every pew today, Lord. God, that you would touch. And Lord, that you would have your perfect way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. If you believe the Lord heard our prayer, would you give the Lord a shout of victory this morning? Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Choir, you may return back to your seat. You may be seated in the congregation here today. We certainly welcome each one of you to the house of the Lord this morning. If you are a first-time guest at First Apostolic Church. Now, please notice we did not use that word visitor. We, for a long time, have been anti-visitor. You visit a hospital. You visit someone in jail. But you don't visit the church. You're a guest here at First Apostolic Church. And if this is your first time to be with us today, come on, church family. Let's make them feel welcome right now. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being with us today. Come on, let's really put our hands together and welcome our guests. Thank you so much. We are so glad to have Brother and Sister Varnum and family and partial church family with us today. And uh, they came and uh, Friday night we had the wonderful wedding ceremony of Asa and Cameron and what a great time that we had. And I would be sinning, I would be absolutely sinning in my estimation to have such a man of God as Brother Varnum that's here with us today and not reach out to him and impose upon him and say, would you stay over Sunday and would you preach for us Sunday evening? And uh, he checked his schedule, had to let me kind of hang in the balances for a, little, uh, for a little while. And he called back and he said, I, I will be able to be with you all church family tonight. You don't want to miss. Be here at 530 for prayer. Be here at 6 o'clock for the service. You don't want to miss hearing Brother Jason Varnum tonight. You don't want to miss it. I mean, postpone whatever you got to postpone. If you're, if, you're, if you're planning on getting COVID, put it off till tomorrow, all right? <laughs> just, just, just postpone it. Just, just, you know, just put it off because you're going to hear, you're going to hear a wonderful message from God's Word tonight. You know, I'm welcoming guests today, and I've got some honored guests, and I just want them to stand. I, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, in case you're wondering who I'm talking about, all I'm going to have you do is stand because I'm so proud that you're here because you are my neighbor, all right? Jennifer and Trey, would you all stand right now? These are our next door neighbors. And we are so glad. We are so glad. Uh, last night we were out walking and I, uh, Trey was getting uh, in his car and, and uh, we began to talk and, and I, I knew that Trey had been here a few services. And I'm gonna tell you, if there's ever been a compliment, Trey said this. He said, you folks just make me feel at home. He said, I just feel at home around you all. And isn't that what we want everyone to feel is when they walk into these doors, welcome home. Welcome, welcome home. Our ushers are going to come at this time and we're going to receive our Sunday morning tithing and offerings unto the Lord. These tithes and offerings go into the work of God. They go in to support all of the different ministries that we have here at First Apostolic Church. And so give as God has prospered you and um, God will open up those windows of heaven and God will pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. Have you ever noticed that wherever God shows up, that sooner or later you run out of room. And uh, that's, that's, certainly, that's certainly the case. There shall not be room enough. But you know, I'm not talking about, I'm going to give $50 today and tomorrow God's going to give me $75 back. I'm not talking about that. God has blessings for you and I that are far better than any kind of monetary gift. Aren't you glad for the blessings of peace today? Be glad for the blessing of peace in the midst of turmoil. When people look at you and say, well, your life ought to be falling apart, but you have something inside of you that's holding you together. So God's able to bless us. God's able to bless us with peace today. Join me as we pray right now. Father, I thank you for the health that's in my body. Lord, as far as I know that I'm a, I am a healthy man today. Lord, I thank you for health in my body. 
Lord, I thank you for the ability that you've given me to earn an income, to feed and to shelter and to clothe my family. Father, I'm thankful today that through your word, I know the covenant of financial giving of tithe and offerings. And Lord, I thank you for that revelation today. And as I come, Lord, to worship you in the giving of tithe and offerings, I pray, God, again, over these verses of Scripture, that you will open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. I stand upon your word today. Lord, bless as we worship you in the giving of tithing and offerings in Jesus' name. Put your hands together and worship the Lord as we give.
My life is under the blood. If you're looking for me, if you're looking for me, I've been set free. If you would remain standing with me, and if you are physically able to stand, if you would stand in honor of the reading of the Word of God, I will say to those that are putting the Scripture on the screen today, go on down to 1 Kings chapter 16, and verse 29, if you would please. I will omit the first two verses, and I'll just comment upon them in just a second. 1 Kings chapter 16, verse 29. I know you've got your Bibles in your hand, but could we give our praise team and choir, could we give them a great hand? Does everyone know, does everyone know today that hours before the service starts, that there's people here practicing and preparing to open this building and... Um, so I, I, uh, I thank them today for their hours of practice. Amen. I thank them. I really do. Thank them. You know, sometimes we can open the door for everybody else but our very own. Sometimes we just need to open the door for our very own till our very own. Hey, you're doing a good job today. First Kings chapter 16, verse 29. And in the 30 and eighth year of Asa, king of Judah, began Ahab, the son of Omri, to reign over Israel. And Ahab, the son of Omri, reigned over Israel in Samaria 20 and two years. And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him came to pass as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ephbel, king of the Zidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. And he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. Ahab made a grove, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings that were before him. In his days did Hael the Bethlehite build Jericho. He laid the foundations thereof in Abiram, his firstborn, and set up the gates thereof in his youngest, Segrim. According to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Joshua, the son of Nun. Just have a, a two-word two title today. I want to minister on wicked Jezebel. Wicked Jezebel. Father, I ask you this morning to anoint your servant. God, anoint me with the Holy Ghost. God, that I may speak the words of life. God, that I may drive away Lord, the spirits that would like to keep men and women in darkness and in bondage. Lord Jesus, walk the aisles of this church today. God, open our eyes, Lord, and touch us. Lord, if you'll give me the anointing, I will give you the glory. For we ask all of these things. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. If you believe you're going to receive the word, would you clap as you're being seated right now? Come on, give him the best hand clap in all the service. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. We are told in 1 Corinthians 10 and 11 and in Romans 15 and 4, we are simply told the reason that we have the Old Testament. Just briefly, we have the Old Testament. These two verses of Scripture says that they are written for our admonition or our learning, that we have the Old Testament history and written and passed down for our admonition, we, we are to be admonished by things that are told in the Old Testament. We are to learn from the things that are told. We are to learn from events in the Old Testament. We are to learn that, uh, about judgment and about how to serve God. We're also told that, that we're given the Scripture that we through patience and comfort of the Scripture, that through patience and comfort of Scripture, that we, would have, that we would have hope. So we're given the Old Testament for our admonition. 
We're given the Old Testament because the Old Testament is still relevant to us today. Now I know today when I announced my title of Wicked Jezebel, I didn't have to have anybody be seated. I didn't even hear a praise of the Lord. I didn't, Brother Purdue, I didn't hear anybody say, oh, oh good, shh, shh, good, 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 good. He's going to talk about Jezebel today. But can I tell you, I believe with all of my heart that the spirit of Jezebel is very much alive today. As a matter of fact, I believe that everyone in this building comes in contact with the spirit of Jezebel and battles with the spirit of Jezebel. I'll be very transparent to you today and tell you your pastor here, your pastor here fights because the spirit of Jezebel wants to speak. The spirit of Jezebel wants to distract. The spirit of Jezebel wants to take our focus on what matters and place it on things that really don't matter at all. Well, let's talk about Jezebel for a moment. Let's introduce her. She, we find ourselves first being introduced to her husband, her husband Ahab. Now, the Bible has several things to say about Ahab, and none of them are really good. There's only one thing said about Ahab that's good, and I'll tell you about that in just a little bit. But the Bible says that Ahab was evil. Now, he was evil before him and Jezebel ever met. Matter of fact, before they ever started dating, before they ever said, I do, before they ever married, Ahab was an extremely wicked man. Well, the Bible describes his wickedness by this. It just simply says, combined all the kings before him and he's done more evil than all of the kings combined together. It says that he, he went and worshiped at, uh, he worshiped or followed after the sins of Jeroboam. Of course, the simple sins of Jeroboam was that Jeroboam stayed focused upon God, but he presented a way to Israel to worship that was a way of convenience. He simply said, Jeroboam simply said, it's too tedious to go to Jerusalem. It's too tedious to make that long journey. It's too tedious, it's too hard, it's too difficult. So Jeroboam set up golden calves, kind of like, a, a, a Coca-Cola machine on every corner. He just set up a way that you could just step out your door. You didn't have to be inconvenienced to serve God. And of course, we understand that this way of convenience led Israel into, into idolatry. But had that been enough, had that just simply stopped there, we now learn that he married a very wicked king's daughter. She was a full Fledge 100% heathen, all right? There was nothing of God about her. She had never been to Sunday school or Sabbath school. She had never been trained in the commandments. She had been an idol worshiper from the day that she was born. And she served all of these different idols. He married Jezebel. He married Jezebel. And then something interesting is just put in the scripture in verse number 34. You see, when Joshua and the children of Israel marched around Jericho and Jericho's walls fell because of obedience, the spirit of prophecy came upon Joshua and Joshua prophesied over the city. And he says, if any man will try to rebuild what God has destroyed, well, that's a dangerous thing to want to rebuild what God has destroyed. Can you tell me why you or I would ever want to go back to what God brought us out of? Why would I ever want to go back to a life that God brought me out of? And so God simply said through the spirit of prophecy to Joshua, if anyone tries to rebuild Jericho, I want it to lay in ruins. I want it to be a testimony of the power of God and the obedience of his people to march. And if anyone would mess with this testimony and rebuild this city, he will do it at the expense of the death of his firstborn child and the death of his youngest. But you see, when Ahab and Jezebel are married, when Ahab and Jezebel are married, 
prophecies are not taken serious anymore. Prophecies. That old stuff about the rapture. That old stuff about you're going to reap what you sow. That old stuff about absolutes and consequences. Because it just simply, somebody looked out and said, man, that's a great piece of property, Brother Fuller. That's a great piece of property over there. Why in the world has someone not bought that piece of property? Well, you, you, you just don't understand. You can't build anything over there. You, you can't build nothing over there. Well, if you build something over there, well, you, 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 your, your firstborn child will die. And if you build something over there, your baby child, your baby son will die. You, don't, don't, don't you understand? And all of a sudden, somebody starts to belly laugh and say, you're really kidding me, right? You don't really believe that stuff about the Lord coming back in the clouds, do you? You don't, you don't really believe that stuff about if I do wrong, judgment will come. You, you don't really believe that, do you? You don't really believe that, do you? And so the Bible says that Hael, the Bethelite, built Jericho. And just like the word said, when he dug the foundation, he goes home to find that his firstborn son is dead. But you know, there's something about a generation that we are ministering to today. Seems like that judgment used to humble people, but now it seems only to harden them. I just think if I dug the foundation of that city, Brother Hammond, when I came home, my firstborn son was dead. I think I would just leave it a foundation and walk away, but not him. It hardened him and he continued to build. And the day that they put the gates on the hinges, his youngest son died. It's interesting that we have to understand that even though evil was rampant, God's word is still very much true and alive. Doesn't matter how much sin that we see in this world. Of course, just when we think that they went to a new low level, it seems like it keeps going. But can I tell you, I don't care how low this world may go. This Bible that I hold in my hand is still true and it's still alive. And I'm still building my life. Seems like the Jezebel now takes the lead. And in 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 4, look at this verse with me. It's a time of drought. It says, for it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord that Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by 50 in a cave and fed them with bread and water. Now, I want to tell you about Jezebel. Jezebel's chief goal is to silence the voice of God in your life. He wants to silence, she wants to silence the voice of God in your life. And how can she do it? How can she do it? The Bible says when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord. Jezebel knew that I'll never truly convert Israel as long as those prophets are prophesying. As long as those prophets are teaching the word, I'll never turn this heart fully to Baal. I'll never have full reign of the way they worship. I'll never have full reign of what they believe. And I'm going to tell you something. There is a spirit of Jezebel aloof in our world today that will not be content until it controls what we watch, what we think, what we read, what we believe. How am I going to do this? I will cut off the prophets of the Lord. I will silence the voice of God in the lives by silencing the prophets. But thank God for an Obadiah 
Thank God for someone in this day when the world is trying to cut off the voice of God. The Bible said, I have hid thy word in my heart. I believe I'm looking at several hundred people on a Sunday morning that has come to send a clear message to Jezebel. I've got the word hid in my heart. I'm gonna keep the word hid in my heart. You might get a lot of denominations, but you're not getting this one. You might get a lot of people's beliefs, but I got word for you. You're not getting this one. We have to never, as never before, if this is Pastor Appreciation Month, we have to go from honoring the person to honoring the purpose. I want you to honor the purpose, not the person. I get honored, I don't need Hallmark, and I thank you for all the cards and everything that's been sent to our home and been given to us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. But oh, how I want you to always honor the purpose. The purpose of preaching is so that Jezebel doesn't silence God's word in our hearts. Romans chapter 10, verse 13 through 15. If you want to just see how important preaching is, Romans 10, 13 through 15. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Somebody say amen. amen. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how they shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Can I tell you today, if Jezebel can silence the preacher, he will silence the voice of God in our lives. Beware when the spirit of Jezebel, preaching is not an op uh, occupation. Preaching is a calling. No man chooses to be a preacher. God chooses the person to be the preacher. And the reason it, it, it is, how can they believe if they've not heard? And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can he preach except he be sent? And then it, it, it uses the analogy of his feet. Now, brothers and sisters, I have my feet covered for multiple reasons today. I have my feet covered for multiple reasons today. One of the reasons, one of the reasons is just more comfortable to walk in shoes. But the other reason is my feet are ugly. They got a few corns on them. The older you get, you know, we, God's got a sense of humor. God's got a sense of humor. The older we get, it's like, God, let the hair grow right here. Right here, God, right here. God says, no, I let it go here and here. <laughs> and here. Sister Carver said, honey, take your house shoes off. I said, they are off. I don't know what that's going on down there, you know. <laughs> but can I just tell you something? You don't write songs about beautiful feet. It's all about eyes, smiles, and complexion, but not feet. But when it comes to the gospel, the gospel would take one of the most uncomely parts of our body and say, these are the instruments that are used to bring you the gospel. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach. Ephesians 4 and 11, and I got to go. Ephesians 4 and 11. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Why did you give us the fivefold ministry? Why did you give us God? Why is it a gift for the perfecting of the saints? Oh, it's wonderful to obey the plan of salvation, but don't stop there. Oh, it's wonderful to come to the altar and repent, but don't stop there. It's wonderful to go up here and be baptized in his name, but don't stop there. 
It's wonderful to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost evident by speaking in other tongues, but don't stop there. You need to keep on coming and hear the preacher because the Bible says for the perfecting of the saints. That word perfect means maturing of the saints. When I get born again, it's ga ga goo 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 ga ga ga. I'm just a baby. But if I'll keep coming to church, I get mature. I begin to get mature in God and I begin to get perfected. You don't have to speak to me. You don't have to shake my hand. You don't have to tell me my pie was the best pie that was baked for the homecoming. You don't have to mention my name. Why? Because I am a mature saint of God through the preaching. For the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. You see, you can't be put to work in God's house until you mature. The last thing we need to do is put you somewhere where you're not mature enough to handle it. And maybe if you think God has got a door for you to open, but it's not opening, why don't you start praying for God to mature you? Because God may know you're not able to handle what's on the other side of that door. Not every prayer that we pray, not every prayer that we pray and believe it's God's will, God says, you just don't know what's on the other side of that door. You just don't know what's on the other side of that door. So the perfecting, the maturing of the saints for the work, work, we, put you, we can put you to work now. Look how beautiful this works. For the perfecting, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Edifying means to grow. And when the preaching is loosed in the church, it will mature the saints. And because it matures the saints, we don't have a lack of workers. And because we don't have a lack of workers, all of a sudden, the church begins to grow. People begin to be added to the church. Can you say amen? amen. She wants to silence the voice of God through the prophets. Not only that, when Elijah challenged Ahab and Jezebel in 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 19, the one prophet, the one, everybody say the one, the one, the one, the one prophet, Elisha, or Elijah, excuse me, the one prophet, the one prophet, in 1 Kings 18 and 19 says, Now, therefore send and gather to me all of Israel unto Mount Carmel. And the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the grove, 400, which did eat at... She had 850 paid for preachers. She had 850 preachers that would tell the world what not thus saith the Lord, but thus saith Jezebel. 850 that ate at her table. 850 that she bought him a suit once a year. 850 that she made sure they had food. 850. But the word of God is so powerful. That all it takes is one. All it takes to turn your whole family around is just one voice of God in that family. Brother Varnum, we got some people here in this church that celebrate five and six generations of being in church five and six generations. They get together and they're, 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 there's, there's hundreds. Somebody, somebody said there's thousands, even hundreds. There's, there's hundreds that are, there's hundreds that are there. But before you get overcome with hundreds being there, it all started somewhere, somehow, with just one light of truth that shone down upon that family. Just one bob or one Sally showed up at family reunion and said, I've been going down to that apostolic church and, 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 and I got the Holy Ghost and, 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 and I got baptized and, 
And all of a sudden, people start saying, well, well, well we can't even pronounce alcoholic, apostolic. We, we can't even halfway pronounce it. But you just let that one individual stay true to God. And all of a sudden, it's two, and it's three, and it's four, and it's a pew, and it's a section. Because there, you hear me today, there is power in the word of God. Jezebel's hoping to intimidate you. Jezebel's hoping for you to stop coming to church. Jezebel's hoping that you'll always look and say, there's more of them than there is of me. But God is saying, just stand up and challenge. Come on, give him praise right now. Just one. I just need one. I'll take on 850. Just one man can get a prayer through. Just one prophet prayed. 850 prayed all day long to Baal. And Baal never answered. But give me one man at the evening time. Give me one man at the close of the ages. Give me one man at the soon coming of Jesus Christ. Just give me one man that'll step up and begin to pray a prayer and the fire will fall from heaven. Come on, give him praise. Just, just one man. Just one man. You do understand that our New Testament started by a man named John. John 1 23 simply said and he said they asked him in John 1 22 they said just you tell me who you are would you tell Israel who you are and he said I am the voice of it's all God needs all God needs is one person are you one are you one are you wondering do you qualify to make a difference in your life I just ask you are you one and you ask that, you say, yes, sure, I am one. Then yes, God can use your life. God wants to use your life. Just the voice of one. One prayer. One prayer. But you got to understand, Elisha, Elijah, excuse me, will pray that prayer and fire will fall from heaven. And Elijah will order the execution of 850 False prophets should be a time of rejoicing. Rain begins to fall. Rain hasn't failed in three and a half years. Little children are splashing in puddles. Moms and dads are holding buckets on the corners of their houses and filling buckets with water. It's a time of celebration. It's a time of joy. It's a time when Elijah should be walking the muddy streets saying, look what our God has done. It's a time when Elijah should be going up and down and saying, now let's always serve God, children. But I want you to follow me. In 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 1, and Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel, don't ever, don't ever, don't ever wait for Jezebel to repent. Because if this doesn't move you to repentance, I don't know what would. Then Jezebel sent how many messengers? I guess Jezebel thought what works for God will work for me. And you know what? She's right. Because those people have 99 things going right in their life, but they want to listen to the one thing that's wrong. They've got a lot of things they ought to thank God for. But I'm going to tell you, Jezebel gets her, gets her marker out and she wants to highlight that part of your life. Doesn't matter that you've been serving God, you're an overcomer now. You see the error of your way. Jezebel's got her highlighter out and she keeps saying, look at this up here. Look at this up here. Doesn't matter that you walked in here today. Jezebel wants you to complain about the car you drove. 
Doesn't matter that you got your kids in Sunday school today. Jezebel always wants to highlight. Let me tell you something. Jezebel is negative, always negative. The only time Jezebel is ever positive is when she is positively negative. She's always negative. She's always wanting to highlight what's wrong in your life. When you ought to be splashing in a puddle and drinking water from the corner of your house. When you ought to be playing like a kid in the middle of a rain because it hasn't rained in three and a half years. Jezebel comes by and says, no, I, I'm, I'm just gonna tell you, you shouldn't be doing this. Jezebel is a, well, I don't know how to say it. She, she's a party pooper. She just, she's just a spoiler. She's a, I hope nobody's here by the name of Debbie. She's a Debbie Doubter. I see heads turning, so obviously there's Debbies here today. We're not talking about you. We're talking about your cousin. Can I tell you, Jezebel doesn't want you to rejoice. Jezebel absolutely hates what happens when this choir begins to sing. Jezebel hates what happens every time that, and we keep using him, but he's such a beautiful example. Kenny's such a beautiful example of what God can do when that young man, uh, a young man some time ago walked into this place, Brother Barnum, his eyes were so empty you could see plumb to the back of his head. He was empty of life. Life had raped him and life had robbed him. But at a Christmas dinner, he's, he's our, part of our family on my wife's side. At a Christmas dinner held here at the church for that family, Kenny made his way here. And in the midst of that, Kenny was brought to the house of God. And on a Sunday night, God baptized him and filled him with the Holy Ghost. And, and, and it's been months now. It's been months now. He doesn't even look like the same young man. I had to take a second look. I had to take, Kenny, where you at this morning? Kenny, would you stand right now? They're, they're pointing. Kenny, run up here real quick. Run, just run up here real quick. Oh, Jezebel doesn't like this. It, he, he, Jezebel doesn't like this. He was so empty. He was so empty. So empty. Hair down to his shoulders. The world had raped him and the world had robbed him. But when God got a hold of him, Kenny, get down in the altar and do a little shouting, would you? That's what he does now. Jezebel doesn't like that. Jezebel doesn't like that. Come on, Jezebel wants to send you a message. Every time you get back up, Jezebel says, what are you doing back up? Jezebel says, why are you trying to do what you're doing? Don't listen. If revival can come by one voice, destruction can come by one voice. You may be seated today. I hope this is all right this morning. Verse two, chapter 19, verse two. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elisha, Elijah, saying, so let the gods do to me and more also. If I make not thy life as the life of one of them, by tomorrow about this time. Please think about this. If Jezebel so powerful and mighty, why don't she do it now? I'll tell you why. She's nothing but threats. She wants to paint a picture of your tomorrow that you don't have one. If Jezebel can somehow get in your head and tell you your tomorrow will be no different than your today or your yesterday, Jezebel just has to stand back and wait for the hearse to come pick you up. But if somehow you can believe one message today that God can make all things new, that God can turn your life around, that this Sunday morning, this Sunday morning is not a coincidence. Sir, that hot, salty tear that flowed down your face is not a coincidence. Ma'am, that uneasiness that you're feeling is not a coincidence. It is the Holy Spirit of God telling you that I want to make a change. I want to make a change in your life. In 
Jezebel comes and tells you, go ahead and pray if you want to. Things are not changing. Go ahead and pray if you want to. Things aren't changing. You fool. You're foolish to keep on praying. God, thank you for this. Thank you for when Daniel started praying and he didn't get his answer on the first day, second day, third day, 10th day, 12th day, 17th day. 20th day, but on the 21st day. God, I want to thank you for saying this. You said, Daniel, I want to tell you something. I heard you the first day. But there was some spiritual interference in the airways. I had something else I had to go tend to. But I want you to know I heard you the first day. I want to tell somebody in this building today with the spirit of prophecy upon my lips, God heard you the first time you prayed. Don't you allow Jezebel to tell you God doesn't answer, God doesn't care. If Jezebel has her way, she's not going to try to convince you there is no God. She's just going to try to convince you that God doesn't care. She just wants you to think God does. She's not going to try to get you, Brother Salyards, not to believe in God. She's way too wise for that. But if she can somehow get in our ear and tell us, I've been praying for years. I've been praying for years. I've been praying for years. It seems like the more I pray, the worse it gets. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. For God heard you the first time you prayed. Pray on, church. Pray on, church. Pray on, church. Worship on, church. Oh, Elijah. Oh, Elijah, I wish I could have been there to help you. I wish I could have been there to say, Elijah, if Jezebel is all that bad, why don't she come get you right now? I'm going to tell you why she can't come and get you right now. Because you are in the hand of your heavenly father and no man can pluck you out. All Jezebel can come and do is paint a picture in your ear of what your tomorrow will be like. And if you listen to Jezebel more than you listen to the man of God, Jezebel has become, for, has become successful. If you allow Jezebel to, 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 to pick out all the flaws and there's no man that's ever stood in a pulpit and may I add, no saint ever sat on a pew that's not had a flaw or two. But if all I'm here to do is pick out your flaws and you're here to pick out my flaws, we're gonna get nothing done. But if some Somehow somebody can see that this is the word of the Lord. God can say, hey, devil, I don't believe my kids are gonna die on drugs. Hey, devil, I don't believe my marriage is gonna end in divorce. Hey, devil, even if my factory shuts down, God is going to raise something up. Rejoice not against me, oh, my enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. Come on, Elijah, stay at the party. Come on, Elijah, open your mouth and drink fresh water from the, from the wells. Come on, Elijah, kids are shouting. Come on, Elijah, people are bathing and cooking and playing in the water. Come on, Elijah. But you know what Jezebel wants to do? She wants to separate you from the party. Now, we're not all made up the same. But if all you ever do is wonder why them people are happy, if all you can do is sit and fold your arms and say, there they go again. There that lady comes out of the choir again. There that boy comes running around the building. Speedy Ben, there he goes again. There he goes. Jezebel done drove you away from the party. And the Bible says the joy of the Lord. You know, they have songwriting, Brother Varnum. They have, they have so I don't think they call them songwriting sessions. Is that what y'all call them when y'all get together? Song, songwriting. Songwriting sessions. Not him writing sessions, but song. <laughs> they, they, they write all these songs. And listen, 
I'm for all these songs about heaven touches earth, lies a juicy kiss, and na 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 na. I'm telling tell you, I get in the house of God. I want to get in some of them songwriting sessions. Because I want to write some songs like, Devil, I'm going to rip your lips off. <laughs> oh, Devil, I'm going to black both your eyes. I'm going to rip your lips off. I'm going to... Come on now. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Hey, folks. I'm going through a trial and you're going through a trial, but we're not going to go and sit around and talk about how long our scars are and how difficult we've had it. The joy of the Lord. Devil, I am going to get back up. Devil, I am going to laugh again. Devil, the sun is going to shine again. Devil, I'm going to have some nights that I don't get up in the middle of the night. I, yeah, yeah. Come on. Devil, I'm going to sleep all the way through the night. Come on, I'm talking to somebody today. Jezebel's done drove you away from your shout. She's done drove you away from your laughter. She done drove you away. It's time to rebuke Jezebel. It's time to tell Jezebel tomorrow could be my blessing. Tomorrow is not my beheading. Tomorrow is my crown. Tomorrow is my crown. Oh, there's a promise coming down that dusty road. There's a promise coming down that dusty road. Come on, musicians, come on right now. Hey, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. <laughs> Go ahead and just let God have his way this morning. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, Jezebel doesn't want your hands lifted. Jezebel tells you it's nothing but emotions. Jezebel doesn't want you to shout and cry. Jezebel doesn't want that this morning. <laughs> yeah, stomp, stomp, stomp on the devil. Stomp, 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 stomp on the devil. Stomp, stomp, stomp. Jezebel, you have ruined so many days. Jezebel, you've kept me up your last time. Jezebel, I will not listen to you. Stomp, stomp. 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 Stomp.
thank you, Lord. Wicked Jezebel. Wicked Jezebel, I put you under my feet. Wicked Jezebel. Wicked Jezebel. Wicked Jezebel. Do you, do you know that the only way wicked Jezebel can take what God's given me is through a lie. Ahab wanted the vineyard of Naboth, but Naboth was grounded in conviction. My vineyard's not for sale. And it made Ahab, oh, so mad. I'm going to tell you something. People that are all the way sold out are an irritant to those that are halfway sold out. And Ahab went home and was sulking. Jezebel, now this is in the Bible. Jezebel said, why is your spirit the way it is? And he said, because I want Naboth's vineyard and he won't sell it. She said, I'll get it. How are you going to get it, Jezebel? I'm going to lie on Naboth. I'm going to cause her to be a feast. Then I'm going to lie on him. I'm going to tell that he's blasphemed God. He's blasphemed God and the king. I'll bring two witnesses that are liars. And in the midst of the feast, it will stop and it will point out Naboth. The lies will be that he's a blasphemer. And they'll take him out and stone him. And when they take him out and stone him, the vineyard's yours, Ahab. And just like it happened, just like I told you, they lied on Naboth. Let me tell you something. Don't you ever leave the truth over a lie. Don't ever leave the truth over a lie. She come home and she said, go ahead, Ahab, go down there and get your vineyard. Naboth's dead. And old Ahab got in a good mood and went down there and was checking the vineyard out. When God told the prophet Elijah, he said, go down to Naboth's vineyard. He said, but he was dead. Uh-uh, not with God. And it was still, though the lie had been told, it did not diminish the fact that it was still Naboth's vineyard. So Ahab's looking around his vineyard and here come Elijah. And you see, you see Ahab's the way he is because listen to how he greets his pastor. Listen to how he greets the man of God. Elijah come walking up and Ahab said, oh, there's my enemy. Said, there's my enemy that's troubled Israel. He said, I ain't troubled Israel. You and your wicked wife is the one troubling Israel. And just let me go ahead and prophesy. When the dogs get through with your wife, they won't be nothing left of her. And it'll happen. The same dogs that licked up, and I know it's about dinner time. Right. But the same dogs that licked up this gonna lick up your wife. And just like a few days or months later, Jay Hugh was gonna go get vengeance on old Jezebel. And Jezebel knew he was coming. See, even the devil knows there's judgment coming. See, old Jesse's trying to mess with my ear right now. I said, you ought to left him shouting, Brother Carpenter. Get out of my ear, Jesse. Get out of my ear. Jezebel knows judgment's coming, and this is in the Bible, so help me. Now, Jesse, 
Jezebel's an old woman. She's an old woman. The Bible said old Jezebel painted up her face. She said, I, I, I need to look young. She tied up her head. This is in the Bible. She fixed up her hair. She was trying to present newness to Jehu. You don't want to kill this. You don't want to kill me. You don't want to kill me. But Jehu looked up there and he knew it. Sister Penton, he knew it. He looked up there at old Jezebel and said, that ain't nothing but an old hag in a new dress. That ain't nothing. I don't care how pretty your face is painted and how tied up your head is, how seductive looking you are. You're that old Jezebel. Man, it's, it's good stuff, ain't it? See, you, you got to understand, there's nothing new under the sun. The devil will paint his tricks up. It's still there. Listen, it, 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 it's just an old hag in a new dress. That's all it is. And then Jehu said, and I'd like to say it to you today, who is on the Lord's side? Who's on the Lord's side? He was, he was looking up at Jezebel and he said, who's on the Lord's side? And the Bible said three eunuchs stuck their head out the window with Jezebel. It makes sense, don't it? Eunuchs can't reproduce. Jezebel's always surrounded with what never reproduces. Jezebel is nothing but pleasure. She don't want another generation. He said, who's on the Lord's side? Three eunuchs stuck their head out the window and said, we are. He said, cast her down. It's time for Jezebel to be cast down. He said, cast her down. Cast her down. It's time that some of us that have been living around Jezebel and we've never produced nothing in our lives, it's time for us to stop blaming the preacher, stop blaming the church. It's time to look at Jezebel and say, you're the reason. Stop. We're going to stop on the devil. I love it. I love it. I love it. Because they threw old Jesse down. But that wasn't the end of it. Jehu took his horse and he just trampled over Jezebel for a little bit. He just trampled back and forth over Jezebel. He took his horse and just pounced on her a little bit. You know, I, I think we need to take our praise this morning and, and, and just, you know, Jezebel just got knocked out, but she's gonna revive. I wanna take my horse today. This is more than just a Sunday morning pick them up. This is more than just a good emotional service. I want to put Jezebel under my feet today. 5.30 prayer meeting, 6 o'clock Jason Barnum. Let's go home shouting the victory. Shout.